TP-Link has been one of my go-to for smart plugs for years. I have been testing out a lot of Tapo products lately. Naturally, when I saw Tapo had a smart plug, I had to see how it compared to their other Tapo offerings, as well as compare it to my current go-to TP-Link smart plug. What did I find out? I'm Wanderer001, let's get into it. The smart plug itself is honestly very plain to look at, which is something that I appreciate. The size has also come down dramatically from the years when I used to get smart plugs that would take up the entirety of the outlet. Overall dimensions of this are only 2.3 by 1.5 by 1.3. It is ridiculously small and you can see it even kind of scallops off in the back a little bit. And when I say ridiculously small, you can actually get two smart plugs in a wall outlet with no problem. As I mentioned before, my current go-to is the TP-Link smart plug here. And if we take our Tapo and put it on top of that, you can actually see that it is smaller, offering the same amount of amperage and voltage as that larger plug also has some extras that we'll talk about a little later. As we come around the smart plug itself, you can see the face right there has the standard US plug input. Over here on the right hand side, all covered up is actually a Matter QR code. So if you're looking for a smart plug that is Matter compatible, you're in the right place. Around the back, you see, as I mentioned, it scallops in, not a lot to look at back there. On the left hand side, there is the actuation button. This will turn on and off the device. There is a very noticeable click when you turn it on and off. That sounds like this. And to me, I appreciate something like that because that lets me know if the device is on or off. Generally with a smart plug, you're gonna have this placed in a location that you're not gonna get to all the time. So being able to hear a satisfying click on or off in case whatever you're turning on takes a little while to warm up or doesn't indicate to you that it's turned on, hearing that is very useful. Also, this button right here has a blue LED, lights up when it's on, turns off when it's not in use. Coming to the bottom, not a lot to look at, just some information about the device covered up. Because this is a smart device, there is a setup process. There are actually two different setup processes. One is if you use the QR code here to set this up as a Matter compatible device or just linking this to the Tapo app, you can utilize their Bluetooth setup, which looks like this. This will be setup of the Tapo Mini Smart Plug. Come down to the P125. Is it blinking? And this is if you're not using the scanning method. Already blinking, enable Bluetooth. So now it's going to try and connect via Bluetooth to this rather than scanning the QR code. So we'll give that a moment. Select your Wi-Fi network. And then the one thing that Tapo has yet to correct is having this show up in plain text right away. And then the follow-up screen. But that is what I'm looking for, so we're going to continue. And then that should connect it to my network. Give that a moment. And it's connected to Alex A. And we'll give it a very unique name right there. Where is this going to be? Well, I'm going to say that's in my living room. And then we could choose an icon or we can leave it as the default. And you have that fancy icon right there. And then last but not least, you check for firmware. There is, so we're going to update. And that would complete the setup of the Apo Mini Smart Plug PM125. As you can see right there, firmware doesn't take all that long. And just like that, two seconds later, sounds good, we're good to go. You can set up an update cycle. So this is always something I liked about Tapo products is between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. when nobody's really supposed to be up, it will check for an update. So I'll say, got it, that's fine. And then here we have all of my devices and it has listed under the plugs, the new Tapo smart plug that was set up. Connection to the device is over Wi-Fi, and that's 2.4 gigahertz, not five. You don't need faster speeds with something like this. You just need it to have longer range. It also does have Bluetooth, as I mentioned before, as part of the setup process and Matter. Right now, I don't have a Matter hub or any other Matter devices in my home. This is the first one, so I cannot speak to how it operates for Matter if the way that this device works for everything else is an indication of how it works with Matter, you'll have no problem. It is compatible with voice assistants such as Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. I mentioned the button placement being here on the left-hand side. Sometimes you see the button on the front, but that can get covered up when you plug something in. Generally, a smart plug is placed out of the way, so you don't get to it that often, so you can't really press that but that's okay. Smart plugs have an application that allow you to set up things like scheduling 
on off routines or just manually turning on and off the smart plug. So let's use that as a segue to take a look at the app. This is the application for the Tapo Mini Wi-Fi plug. Notice that on the newly designed Tapo app, you can have things grouped together. So I have my cameras, my plugs, and then right here, you could see my new Tapo plug. Right now it's in its off state. If I select the power button there, I can turn it on. Notice not only does it highlight the background in blue, but it also makes, in this case, the little light picture light up. You don't even have to open up the plug itself before you can turn things on and off. I will select my smart plug. And then again, if I do this right here, I could power it on and off and we'll just leave that in its powered on state. Right up here, we have the name of this. I just left it as is. Coming down, we had our power, turning it on and off, and then our runtime. So here you could see how long I've had the plug running today, how long I've had it in the past seven days, and then how long it's been powered on for the last 30 days. Coming down under that, we have a schedule. If I wanted to set up a schedule for when the plug would turn itself on or off, I select the button and then the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. Here we could set custom time and then select whether we want it to turn the plug on or off and then what days we want this to happen on. Keep in mind that if you have a action to turn on the plug, you will also want to have an action to turn off the plug. We also have the ability to set things based on sunrise and sunset. So here we could say sunrise X amount of hours or minutes before or after, and then do we want to turn it on or turn it off? Similarly with sunset, before or after how many hours and minutes on and off, and then we always have the ability to select our days. Once we set up a schedule, we can select save. Coming back and to the right, we have timer. The timer will allow you to have either the plug be on for a specific amount of time. So I could say after two hours and five minutes, turn the device off. So it will turn the plug off or for whatever reason, after the plug has been off for two hours and five minutes, turn it on. And then I select start and that would set up a timer. Next to that, we have the away mode. Away mode, we could see, I could set specific day. I can set specific time. So right here, custom, sunrise or sunset, just like before. And then to the next day, what do I want to classify that as the next day? And what this will do after I would select my specific days is during the time of 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., the plug will randomly turn itself on and off, mimicking the activity of somebody being home. And then we would just hit start to lock that in. Coming down, we have device sharing. Notice right now I'm not sharing this with anybody, but we can share this individual plug with other people as long as they have their own Tapo account. And then under that, we have help and feedback. If you need help or feedback for any information that's not covered in this video about the smart plug, you can go there to check that out. You also have the ability to make it a favorite. Remember on that front page that I showed you, I was showing you all devices, but there's a tab for favorite. And if I have a favorite set up, that'll make it so that this shows up in that shorter list instead of having to go through all of your devices. I have pretty much everything set up as a favorite because I use Alex A to turn on and off my devices. Speaking of, if I save the word, Alexa, turn off Tapo Smart Plug Mini. Right there, my Alex A device heard me and turned off the device. I can also say, Alexa, turn on Tapo Smart Plug Mini. Whatever the device is called here is what will trigger your Alex A routine. And that was everything that we could do to control our smart plug. But if we come up here to the upper right hand corner and select the sprocket or cog icon, these will be the settings for our smart plug. Starting at the top, we have our device icon. I did pick one of these during the setup process, but if I wanted to, I can change that. And now it's a blender. And if we come back here, powering on the device and powering off the device, notice that there's those subtle animations letting you know that something has actually occurred. Under that, we have our device name. If you wish to change this to make those Alex A routines easier to set up. And then we have our our locations. Right now, I have it in my living room, but I could pick any other location I wanted, as well as set up a custom location. LED status light, notice right now it is auto, meaning that the status light on the power button on the left-hand side of the plug will turn on only when the device is turned on. If we do off, everything is turned off. It never shows up. And then we have night mode, which will allow us to turn off the LED during specific times. So here we have based on sunrise and sunset and then custom between the hours of this and this do not have the LEDs turn on. This is a little feature that you might not think is very important, but if you have this smart plug in a bedroom and you're trying to sleep, 
that LED light, depending on how sensitive you are to light, could keep you up. So the fact that Tapo allows you to make changes to that setting and how it functions is game changing. I have tested a lot of smart plugs in the past, and this is the first time that I have seen something like that. Next, we have default status. This is another thing which if you're looking into a smart plug, you want to know about. What happens if power is lost and then restored to your device? Well, guess what? The default status will tell your Tapo smart plug what to do. Right now, it is set for last on state. So was your smart plug turned on? Then when power is restored, it will return to an on state. If your plug was in an off state, then when power is restored, it will return to an off state. This is very good if you are especially having this in a bedroom to turn on and off a light. If that light was off and you lost power and then power is restored in the middle of the night, you do not want your light to turn on in the middle of the night. That is what the last on state will do. You also have the ability to on, meaning when power is restored, regardless, it will turn that on. Or regardless, power is restored, the plug will be off. Depending on what you have plugged into this and where it's located, this is going to be game changing for you. And let me tell you, as somebody who uses these to power devices in my bedroom, a must have when looking at a smart plug. Here we have auto timer. If I turn this on, it will automatically turn the device off after a specific amount of time. And then I could set that up here if I wanted to. For me, don't necessarily need that, but just know that's how you can make that change. Groups, well, if you wanted to group your Tapo devices together to control all in one spot, you select groups and then add group, you would create a group and then you'd be able to control this smart plug as part of an array of smart plugs. Here we have our device info, lots of sensitive information in there. We'll not be sharing that with you, but that's where you can go to find Mac addresses, things like that. And then firmware update. If I select this, I can select to update the firmware. Or if you notice when we set this up, I set it so that it automatically checks for firmware updates during a period of the day when nobody else is really on the Wi-Fi. And that has been everything that you can do for the Tapo Smart Plug Mini in the Tapo app. As you saw, there's a decent amount of functionality that you get in the application and smart plugs have come a long way from when I first started reviewing them a long time ago. One of the best things that I like to see in a smart plug application is the ability to control what happens due to power loss. This is something that you might not think about when you're looking at a smart plug, but you want to have that feature. You want to control what happens when power returns to the smart plug. This way, whatever you have plugged into it, depending on what it is, you might not want it turning on if power's coming back at three o'clock in the morning. Something else you might not have considered. Well, what if your Wi-Fi goes down, but you still have power? How long does it take the smart plug to reconnect to your Wi-Fi once it can. And in the case of the Tapo Mini Smart Plug here, it takes about six seconds to reestablish its connection to the Wi-Fi. Not terrible at all. Next, something I like to test out is energy usage because, well, you're getting a smart plug to smarten up your home. You do not want it impacting your electrical bill negatively. For the Tapo Smart Plug here, in standby mode, meaning it's just plugged into the wall, nothing's plugged into it, and the plug is turned off, it uses 0.5 watts of power. When the device is turned on, nothing plugged into it, it uses one watt of power. This is one of the lower power usages that I've seen in smart plugs of this size. So if you're really worried about power usage, this is the one to look at. Even with that said, there are a few cons that I want you to be aware of. First being that the app for this does not have any energy usage monitoring. Yes, it'll tell you how long it's been on for over the course of seven days, 30 days, a year, but it doesn't show you the actual wattage being used and give you a graph. I understand that I'm splitting hairs for that, but I like seeing that in a smart plug. Smart plugs are one of the simplest ways to smarten up your home. From setting up automations for lights, coffee makers, or things like that, smart plugs are extraordinarily versatile. And this being a matter compliant plug, if you're building out a matter based smart home, you can't go wrong with the Tapo Mini smart plug. Because of that, I can strongly recommend it. And I will actually be looking to replace my older TP-Link smart plugs with the new Tapo Mini here. If this sounds like what you've been looking for, I will have a link for it in the description area below. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making a comprehensive video like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Still not sure if this is the right smart plug for you? On screen now, you'll see two other smart plug reviews that I have done to help you make a more informed decision for yourself.